Hello, you guys. I'm back. I'm going to just hop onto my other page and share this while I wait for people to pop on. Oh, my hair's a mess. That's weird because this camera's backwards, so I never know which way I'm moving. Um, hang on one second. Let's see. Just make sure I'm live. Yep. Perfect. Sharing this on my timeline. Sweet. I'm back. Hey guys. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, Hey Brandy. Um, anybody that knows, please don't say anything, but all I'm announcing is that I have a really big announcement Ooh, coming up for the new year and I'm really excited about it. Um, I also just got some really exciting news from a friend and past client, um, that I'm really excited about. And you guys, 2018 is going to kick some serious butt. I am so excited. Um, I can't wait. There's big things for myself, big things for the company. Um, okay, I'll leave my phone alone now, I promise. <sighs> I'm really excited, you guys. So um, a lot of you have been with me on this journey since I started this business a um, year and a half ago, probably. Um, so you're going to be really excited for this stuff. So all right. We shall get to it now. Um, I actually had a question. Uh, you guys might have seen her this week. Um, Luna is the little, uh, she, I think she's Australian Shepherd Blue Healer Puppy. And she had a lot of issues with chasing the rake. I did that, um, that video. Her owners couldn't get any gardening done without her being a terror in the garden and chasing the rake. So. We worked through place command with that, um, but I did get an email. So this is something, Linda, that we are going to work on um, with Luna in the store. So Luna's parents own uh, a store down in Capilano Business Mall, I believe, uh, and they'd like to have her there. But um, I did get an email, so this is something we'll address, but I, I can talk a little bit about it on here first. Um, Hi, Michelle, what can we do about barking at customers when they come in the store? Luna is, Luna that is, not Dougal, so Dougal's her husband. Uh, Lin, Linda has a great sense of humor. Um, the store is open 7.30 to 4.30, and often there is only one of us in the store. Is it okay to keep the prong collar on all day? Um, we've been putting it on for silk walks. Those of you who are clients of mine know what a silk walk is. Um, can you give me the percentage breakdown again of what her day should look like? I didn't quite get all of that. Um, she's been sleeping quite happily in her crate at home for three nights now. Yes, I'm so grateful for that. So am I, Linda. That's awesome. Um, I've been thinking it might be easier to get a second one for the store. What do you think? Okay, awesome. Um, first of all, the barking at the customers when they come in the store. So part of that, Luna's a really unsure dog. Okay, so she doesn't really, um, she needs some confidence built up surrounding people. So we're gonna do some exercises with that. Um, but also, um, you don't need to really, uh, yes, it's okay to keep the prong collar on all day. It, nothing's going to happen with it. Um, but um, what I wanna do instead, so it's interesting that you asked about the kennel, what I wanna do instead is use the kennel in the store so that she can kind of learn that she has her own space and she doesn't have to worry about people coming and going. And what we're gonna do is work on how to interrupt the barking. I know that there's only one of you in the store and that's kind of half why I'm recommending that we're gonna use the crate. Um, so I'm going to show you how to interrupt that. You are going to have to walk away from your customer um, or, you know, maybe have the crate close. The hard thing is, is that um, there is only one of you, right? So I would say use the place command 
and have one of you interrupt her with the leash when it starts to happen. But since that's not doable, we are going to use the crate since she's already um, accustomed herself to the crate. Um, and for those of you who don't know how we do that is I've had them uh, just feed Luna in the crate. It's the only way she eats. So breakfast and dinner in the crate at the back door open for the last couple of weeks. Uh, what this does is really kind of tells, um, or not tells Luna, but gets, gets Luna really used to the crate and literally shows her that this is a great place to be. It's it's kind of a, a sounds really cheesy, but it's, um, she associates it with life herself, life itself because it's food. Okay. Um, percentage breakdown of what her day should look like. So when you're home, we'll go through the store too um, at the lesson, but when you're home, 50% of the time, she should be in her crate. Okay. 25% of the time, she should be in command, which is on the walk or in place um, or in a downstay, which uh, I did work on. I'm going to work on, I, I worked on that with Dougal and Jimmy, and I'm going to work on it with you um, once you're back from Australia visiting your daughter. Um, and then 25% of that is free time. So what you'll do is release her from place, just take off her, her leash and whatnot. Um, when she's in command, leash is on. There's no um, no way around that really. Keep the leash on. 50% crate, 50% in command, or 25% in command, 25% free. So the reason that we use the crate um, is because ideally we want to have the dog structured for 75% of that time that you're home. It's not realistic, right? You gotta make dinner, you gotta you gotta do stuff, laundry. I mean, who knows? So the crate does that for you. Okay, so really use that to your advantage. Um, I'm really grateful that she's, she's going to the crate as well. Uh, it's going to give you kind of just a lot more freedom from actual hands-on training and have the crate, like I said, be structured for you. Um, yeah, I think getting a second one for the store is going to be your best option so that we need to be realistic, right? That's what it all comes down to being realistic. And just the fact that, um, you can't always be training your dog when people come in the store. So we need an easy interrupter. And if she's just contained in the crate, then that's going to be fantastic. Um, let me just see. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in, I am Michelle Sellers. I am owner and head trainer at Cascadia Dog Training in North Vancouver. If you know of anybody that needs a hand with their dog, um, share this. There's a share button down there. Share this post, share it with them, share it on your timeline, whichever. Um, I think I even forgot to introduce myself at the beginning of this. That's crazy. Okay. Hey, Sheila. Hi. Um, how's it going? And Carly. Awesome. Good to see you guys on here. Um, Sheila, can you explain a little bit? I did get your message, but, um, things have been super duper crazy. Can you explain what you were talking about? Um, there's another dog in the picture now, as far as I understand. Um, is this another sibling? Is this new? He was returned by the owners. I'm trying to figure out what was going on with that, but you couldn't even, um, get a prong on. I'm interested to know if you'd be able to get a slip lead on. Um, and then I want to direct you to my muzzle conditioning video. But one thing at a time, explain what's going on with that dog and then we'll address it. Okay. And I'm so glad you can make it. I know that it's 10 o'clock your time and I would be exhausted. Those who know me know I wouldn't even be awake. I'm an old lady. I go to bed at like 930 y'all. I do. It's true. Okay, uh, I got an email from Peter. Now, this is something I really want to talk about because it's something I get asked by clients um, with their older dogs, but I also get asked a lot. I've had a huge influx of puppies since starting this puppy starter program. It is fantastic. Uh, I have one new puppy starting this week. Just finished with Apollo, the lab puppy. Um, and then I feel like, yes, January 27th, um, I am starting with a brand new, like brand, 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 brand new, uh, Burma doodle puppy. Sorry guys, my nose is itchy. This is crazy. 
Um, anyways, Peter says, I have a three-year-old pit mix who loves every other dog except puppies. Uh, she growls at them and nips when they get too close to her personal space. Is it okay for her to correct them? This really scares the owners because she's a pit bull. <sighs> yeah, and I don't know your dog, but um, pitties are a power breed, right? So Rottweilers, pit bulls, boxers, German shepherds, right? I own a power breed. He's three different types of shepherd and they come with a stigma and they come with um, a huge responsibility because when you have a power breed, you're going to have moments of power, right? I'm not saying that's at all what's happening with your dog. Um, I'd be curious to know. Oh, sorry. So she's okay with every other dog. Now, when she nips at them, the danger is that she's going to make contact, right, Peter? And her being a bigger breed, now I know that there are smaller staffies, there's bigger staffies, I'm going to assume that she's bigger, uh, can actually do some damage. Um, now, there are some dogs, usually female, out there, who are kind of an, a nursery dog. And what I mean by that is they are excellent at correcting puppies. They know when to do it. They know... Um, how far to go, they know when to stop, they know just when, you know, um, just what to do and when. I can't say for sure that your dog is one of those dogs. Um, puppies are really annoying, okay? Puppies push boundaries, puppies bite, they nip, they jump, they do everything because they're trying to figure out their world, right? And they're used to mum correcting them, but mum will never go too far. Your dog is not mama to these puppies and that's kind of um, the issue when this happens. Now, yes, puppies are very good at getting in on personal space, um, but I don't think that it's okay for your dog to correct them, okay? Um, first of all, I'm, I'm not really a fan. I don't know if this is happening on a trail. Um, Peter, maybe if you can clarify a little bit more during the week, but if it's happening on trail, at a dog park, at the beach, like for example, Ambleside, um, because I know you mentioned that you're in West Van. I don't know if it's at Ambleside, but, you know, until a puppy has been properly socialized and whatnot, um, until they're a little bit old enough and, sorry, a little bit older, and they do have all their parvo and everything like that, their vaccines, I don't recommend that they go to dog parks where there's um, a ton of other dogs running around and other things that can happen to them. Because with puppies, what happens is one correction that's a little too strong especially during their fear period, which is, you know, it differs, but usually between four and nine months or four and seven months, depending on the dog. Um, one thing that happens that really kind of scares them or, um, uh, for example, a correction that's just a little bit too much, this can lead to um, fear aggression. You know, I've seen it. Um, it can lead to insecurity in your dog around other dogs and can lead to a lot of antisocial behavior. So I'm gonna ask, I wouldn't really let her approach puppies. If you see a bunch of puppies and you're off leash, I would recall her, hopefully her recall's really good. Um, and yeah, I know that it scares the owners because she's a pit bull. And I think that's your responsibility, right? So I don't mean it's your responsibility that, that you know, pit bulls are bad. No, I love pit bulls. I absolutely love them and I'm a huge advocate for them. And I think the problem is uh, lack of training, lack of structure and um, lack of leadership from the owner a lot of times in a lot of these problems that we're seeing um, and media. But bottom line, there is, you know, a stigma around them. And, and we as owners and one day hopefully I'll own one but us as power breed owners we have to be responsible for that I would keep her away from puppies right now um, and then if you are um, you are in West Bend but if you'd like some help um, we do have our monthly socialization pack walks I can also work with you and your dog um, head on over to CascadiaDogTrading.com um, we can get started over there fill out the contact form and we'll get started in the new year and we can really kind of socialize her, but also kind of teach her what appropriate behavior is around puppies, right? But a lot of that is going to be advocating for your dog 
and knowing that puppies are just really annoying and maybe it's a good thing if she just doesn't hang out with them, right? Cool. Um, those of you just hopping on, uh, Melanie, hey, I'm glad to see you on here. How are things with Jasper? Um, I, oh, your note from last week, I'm so sorry. Uh, nobody should have to go through that with their dog. Um, I am Michelle Sellers, owner and head trainer at Cascadia Dog Training in North Vancouver. And um, share this, please share this post. Um, let's get people help with their dogs because it doesn't have to be difficult. Um, now, I'm going to head back to Sheila here for a sec. Yes, it's 10.15 here. Yes, the sibling was returned to us after being gone for four and a half years. Okay, Sheila, was this a litter that you had that you tried to rehome and got some back? So you say return to you. So obviously you had him in the beginning. He was allowed to just grow up with horrible traits. I have gotten a muzzle and prong on him once, but he's scared to death at the vet. He needs his rabies shot in two weeks. He has lots of fear anxieties, um, but he stays in the crate well 50% of his day. Okay, so it was a litter. They were returned to you. Okay, um, and he's fine in the crate, I'm guessing. Um, what I'm going to get you to do, um, because he needs to just develop a trust in you, is don't don't go prong, don't go anything like that just yet. Um, if you can buy a slip lead or even um, make your leash a slip lead um, and just kind of slip it over his head. Hang on, I'm gonna get a leash from from my thing. I'm still here. Hang on. Okay, so this is a little trick. So first of all, slip lead, Sheila. I'm sure that you know what it, you have slip leads. Okay, great. So all I want you to do is just calmly, you know, while you're feeding him, if you can. Just slip it on, just leave the slip lead on him. Just leave it on. Um, you can put it inside his crate, he does wear one. Okay, all I want you to do is slowly walk him around the house for like two 10 minute sessions a day. If it's too much, make it two five minute sessions a day, three five minutes, cut the time short. We want with dogs with um, anxiety and fear issues, we always want to quit while we're ahead, right? We always want to make everything a win, okay? So get that slip lead on. I would leave the slip lead on, make your life easier. And you are going to walk about a fifth of the speed that you normally walk. You're just going to walk them back and forth. That's all you're going to do. We're going to start really, really slow. And what this is going to do is he's... It, this is if you can pick up the leash while it's on him. Um, and all you're going to do is just walk him around. Okay. This is just going to show him that this is all we're doing, buddy. You know, this is all we're going to do. We're not doing anything crazy. I'm getting used to you. You're getting used to me. Um, you can offer him a little bit of food while you're doing this exercise. Um, but I would just make it you and him. Do I wouldn't even try training place yet. Nothing like that. Just walk slow and do it when no one else is home. Uh, I'm not sure how he acts or reacts, I guess, uh, when your husband and kids are home. But you're getting your hands full, girl. I mean, you've now got um, you've you've now got uh, you know f no four 80 pound dogs in your house. That stresses me out. I told you that before. He's very treat motivated. He loves the family. That's awesome. Oh, okay. That's such good news. But he doesn't like anything around his neck or his face. Is that correct? Um, loves the cats. Three dogs. Okay. So with him being returned, this is the third dog. So you have Bo, Mocha, and then there's a female. Um... Oh, I'm so sorry, Sheila. I'm sorry. Okay, so was four, now is three. Um, how are the other dogs kind of reacting to that? Anyways, that's a side note. <clears throat> um, 
She was 16. That's a good life. That's a good life, Sheila. He's very treat motivated. Okay. Awesome. But um, I would be using treats if he was still super tentative. If he's not really tentative, I would cut out the food because what we're trying to do, um, dogs with anxiety are so used to living way up here, right? If you have a scale of one to 10, it sounds to me like Bo's kind of um, at a 10. Okay. So we want to get him at a resting level of like a two or a three so that when it comes time to actually do some work with him, he's used to kind of hovering at that level. Um, food's going to bring him back up, especially if he's really treat motivated. So maybe let's nix the food um, just a little bit right now. The reason I suggested that was a conditioning thing. Um, all I want you to do is walk him around for this week and then, oh yeah, he's scared of anything. Yeah. So we're not going to take him around those things right now. We're just going to let him know. Um, are you guys rehoming him? Are you planning on it? Anyways, um, if you are, uh, that's great. If not, then we'll work through this. Um, that's great too. Nervous dogs. We have to make sure everything's a win. Okay. That's why we're going to, we're starting small with this. Homework for the week. Walk him around. Okay. Good stuff. Um, Maggie has an update on L. Um, I emailed you a few weeks ago asking about our staff with separation anxiety. And you told me on your Facebook Live to decrease affection and have her spending time away from us, and she's getting better. Yes! Maggie, that's awesome. Um, we're working to try and create train her, but as soon as we close the door, she freaks out. Um, we were against the crate originally, but I now see that it can help her and we feel like this is the next step. Um, we might be missing something. What are we doing wrong? Okay. So I actually just talked about this, um, a little bit further back. Okay. Um, we don't want to, a dog has never been in a crate before. First of all, hooray. Awesome for you. Um, that's really, that's really great that she's doing so well and that, um, you're coming around to the crate, uh, because what a lot of people don't realize because we put our feelings on it. It's like, I wouldn't want to be in a box, but what it is for a dog, it's den instinct for a dog. You close in their surroundings, they get more comfortable. They have less to worry about. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I recommend starting out with a wire crate. It's open and airy. Some dogs don't like that. There's still too much going on. Great. Put a towel over it, right? So Maggie, what you're going to do is I think, I think you're right. Uh, I think maybe we're missing the in-between step of um, having her go in the crate and immediately closing the door. So what you're going to do is what I suggested with Luna's owners not too long ago um, in this <clears throat> Facebook Live is you're actually just going to put, you're going to feed her in the crate. Uh, she'll either get one or two meals a day, whatever you're feeding her. I would recommend breaking it up into two for now if you're not already. And you're going to put one of the, sorry, funny get my bearings here, guys. My gosh, I feel like I'm going nuts today. When it comes time to feed her, all you're going to do, and sometimes I even recommend tying the door open so that it can't close. All you're going to do, you're going to put the food bowl at the back of the crate. You're going to walk away. Okay. So that she's associating the crate with all good things. Okay. Um, put the food at the back. Leave her alone. Don't close the door. Let's do this for two weeks since she's starting to settle without the affection. Um, so two weeks just put the food at the back of the crate do it morning and night and the reason i want you to break it up is so that she gets more exposure to this right it's not just once a day it's going to be twice um and what's going to happen what happens with all my client dogs when we do this is that it won't be feeding time anymore but your dog will start to go in there and nap your dog will start to go in there and be like you know guys i just need some time i'm gonna go hang out in here because nobody bugs me in there and, you know, it's not so bad. I get food in here. You know, life is pretty good. Um, so, but the important part is don't leave her too long to eat it. So I want you to do the five minute trick along with the crate. Let me know if this gets too much. Email me. Um, we're going to make it simple though. 
two meals a day, five minutes a meal, fed in the back of the crate with the door open. Five minutes is up, take the food away because I don't want to start uh, developing her anxiety again if she loses her food drive. Let's keep that food drive up. Okay, Maggie, I am so glad that you were able to cut the affection. It is the hardest thing that my clients have to do. Guess what? We got to do it. I have to do it with my own dog, and I have to constantly remind myself, you know what? This affection is for me. It's not for my dog. Screwing them up a little bit. And guys, even I slip. I want to snuggle my dog. I want to get on the floor. Uh, yeah, it happens. Um, Christy. How are you, darling? It's so awesome to see you on here. Um, okay. Ah, you need to get him to the vet. Unless the vet comes to you, Sheila, I'm back on you. <sighs> if he's treat motivated, are you able to muzzle condition him? I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to bring up my YouTube, and I know that I've told you about this before. <clears throat> I have, oh, my ringer's on. Uh, in my foundations playlist, I've got muzzle conditioning part one and two. This is going to take a long time to do. Um, with Prince, with the dog in this video, I think it took two weekly sessions of like an hour and a half each just to get him to tolerate it being on his face, not even loving it. Um, the most important thing that I can say about the muzzle is that is the only way your dog eats is out of that muzzle. That's it. There's no other options, no other treats. I take it by now you have removed the food bag. Um, there is no food bag laying around. All dogs are fed in their crates um, in a bowl. <clears throat> Let me bring up my playlist. Foundation, I hope it doesn't start playing on me, it did. Muzzle condition your dog, so part two comes up before part one. Uh, yes, they are both there. And the first one's like a minute and a half. Anyways, uh, there it is. Here's the playlist because I'm sure at some point I'll be referring to it again. Good. Okay. So I want you to muzzle condition him. He is food motivated. So the only way he eats, and for you too, I actually want you to break up his meals into three. While you're doing this, other dogs are crated. He's the only dog with you at that time. Save yourself the trouble. Put the other dogs in the crates. He's been fed through the muzzle all weekend. Awesome. That's all he gets, okay? Break his meals up into three. Take his daily ration, put it in a bag. In the morning, you're going to um, do a third of it and follow this video. Ah, uh, Christy, thank you. I'm glad. Um, yeah, follow the video to a T. Uh, it's the most success that I've had, but it takes a tremendous amount of patience, but I know you've got it in you. You've got these three dogs. Um, you've got dedication. You know what, girl? You got this. Okay, you got this. And I'm so excited to see how this is going to turn out. Uh, oh, I can't wait for updates. Now, speaking of updates, <clears throat> how are things with Mocha? Um, he has no food bag to pee on or in. Um, you're so welcome, Sheila. He has no food bag to pee on or in. So um, how's that going? I mean, um, how what's happening with his behaviors? Um, I know that you updated me and said that he was looking at you like, who are you and what have you done with my mom? I love that because that, I, I'm not so sure that's how he's looking at you. I think he's looking at you in a whole different light. Like, holy crap, you're finally talking my language. You're giving me what I need, even though it might not look like it, right? Dogs thrive under structure. Um, and I'm a firm believer that all dogs have to work, right? They need a job. Uh, and I've actually had a few conversations with clients about this. Um, this last weekend actually came up a lot because I had a lot of, I had shepherds and labs who 
hunting and working breeds, right? And what I tell people is your dog needs a job. That job is going to be all you got to do is stay on place. That's all you got to worry about right now. All you have to do is stay in a down. Okay. All you have to do is be in a heel. All you have to do is be in your crate. Dogs see structure as a job that they have to do. And that's why they thrive under it. Right. Um, well, with Alaska's death, things have been really hard. She got sick really fast. Had to have to put her down. Is peeing inside has lessened a lot. Yes. Ah, less smelly house, less mess to clean up. His downstay is getting better. See, that's what I'm talking about. Because Mocha needs a job. He's never had a job before. It's why he was being a jerk. Um, give him things to do. Right? You are rocking this. Oh, I'm so excited for you, Sheila. Um, place, yeah, place, downstay, even sit stays. You know what? Mocha's cheeky. I would work some sit stays with him. Uh, don't do it on a bare floor because it's really hard. Um, a sit, depending on the dog, is kind of like a plank um, for humans, like holding out plank, legs, feet, you know, push-up position. Um, and I wouldn't say have him hold it for longer than like 10 minutes. But what I really want you to do is try and have him hold some sit stays. He's going to try and go into a down. It's like, no, nope, sorry, buddy. Pressure up. Get back in the sit. Um, don't do it on the floor. Do it on carpet. Just got a tread belt. <laughs> Tried to get him on it. Um, you know what you're going to do with that? Uh, you're going to need a slip lead for that. And what else you're going to do is just have him go on the belt. Don't turn it on. Have him go on the belt. Um, I know Mocha's food made it motivated. You can even try one of his meals standing on the belt. Now I know the belt moves, um, but if you can kind of try and hold his food out so that he's slowly making it move, right? While he's trying to walk towards the food, have him concentrate on the food so that his brain isn't going, holy crap, this thing's scary. His brain's going, oh, food, got to get to the food. Oh my God, there's food. Oh, I just so happen to be walking while the belt is moving under my own body pressure. Let's have that be step one. <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh. Oh, yeah. But um, you will need a slip lead for that. Uh, I don't recommend prong on the treadmill. It can be a little bit freaky. And even if your dog's super accustomed to pressure of a prong hauler, um, they've been introduced to it properly. It just could just be kind of too much stimuli. All right, darling. So, <laughs> sorry, I keep reading your remark and it just makes me laugh. Um, yes, I am Michelle Sellers, owner and head trainer at Cascadia Dog Training in North Vancouver. Uh, I'm gonna switch that up, hey? I think that's how I say it every single time. Um, if you need help with your dog, welcome aboard. If you uh, know somebody that does, hit that share button, hit the like. Um, let's get this out there. Let's get people help. You guys, people, Sheila, like ask Sheila. She is training her dog for free by attending this every week. She lives in Florida, you guys, and she's training her dog for free on Facebook Live. That's crazy pants. I love it. Oh, you're so welcome, Sheila. You're pretty amazing too. You're doing such great work with these dogs. They're so lucky to have you. God, think about where Mocha would be if he was with anybody else. Oh, my God. Um, oh, this is one I definitely wanted to address. Um, I went through the same behavior with my dog. So Talia, uh, I got a Facebook message from her. Oh, Sheila, I know you miss Alaska. But you got three other turds to keep you company, keep you occupied. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. That's not easy. Um, Talia says, when I look after my parents' border collie and take her for off-leash walks at the local dog trail, uh, she slinks and stalks the other dogs when she sees them from a while away. I don't like it because then she charges them and it really scares some dogs when she rushes them. What's your opinion on this behavior? The slinking, I mean. Oh, what's your opinion on this behavior? The slinking, I mean. And how do I stop the charging? Okay, all of this is played into one. I'm just going to get a sip of water just a sec. 
Um, step one. What I would work on before any of this is not off leash walks. I would have her in an immaculate heel, hold her accountable. Um, she doesn't break that heel because going back to what I was just talking about a second ago, Border Collies need a job. They are a herding dog, which is part of the reason that you're seeing the slinking behavior. Um, it can be seen as predatory, um, but it's also a herding behavior. So she's seeing this dog, there's something that clicks in her brain, there's something that, that instinct kicks in, and then before you know it, what's happening is slink, 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 stop. You'll see the stop and she'll probably couch even lower and then she'll bolt towards the other dog. Um, so there's a series of events that are that's kind of going through um, her mind. Um, and it all starts with her being off leash to begin with. Um, so I know that I'm I will get to the the actual problem in just a sec, but um, in a heel on leash. Um, do, I, I posted my um, YouTube link to all of my um, foundation, sorry, to my foundation playlist earlier. I want to work basics with this dog. I want to give this dog a job, okay? So heel, I want you to train place. Those are the two things that we're going to do. Um, and next week, oh, no, sidetrack for a second, you guys. There is no Facebook Live next week because it's Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. Um, no, Monday's Christmas Day. I don't know, whatever it is, it's one of those. God, good thing I finished my shopping today. Um, I will put an announcement out. I think I might do one on Boxing Day or on the 27th, okay? And then New Year's Eve there won't be one, but again, I'll make that up on a different day. So that's a side note. Back to the stocking border collie. Um, Sam used to do it, okay, when we'd be down at the park. I didn't like it either. Um, I still don't, and if he even tries it, he gets a an interruption that's meaningful to him because I need him to stop doing that because I know exactly what you mean. Uh, they rush up and charge the other dog, and sometimes there's a little growl, and all this comes out, and it's all excitement. Um, and my opinion on the behavior, I think that it's predatory, but not necessarily for for your parents border collie. I think it's more of a herding behavior. I think it's natural. Um, what I'm going to actually recommend is, I don't know if there's any here, um, but if you're ever up in Kamloops, I know of some farmers up there who have sheep and who have other livestock that um, you could actually bring your dog there and have an outlet for them. I know Kamloops is like a four hour drive away, but maybe if you're driving through in the summer, um, go up there and let this dog have run of the mill with the sheep, goats, whatever the heck they're using, um, really kind of get her instinctual stuff out. And you really got to satisfy her innate um, need, her innate need to herd. It's what she does. and. People have border collies in homes, and, and this is what happens, right? Because they can't be who they were born to be. Um, so going back to how do you stop the charging, all of this starts when you start your walk. So you're going to do place, and you're going to do impeccable heel for like a week. So a week impeccable heel, a week carrying over the impeccable heel and working on the place command. Get her resting rate down. Get her really kind of working on keeping everything calm. And then once we can get her to back off leash, um, hopefully her recall is really good. And when you see a dog coming, you're going to stop the behavior before it's even a problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what you're going to do is I would recommend just bringing a slip lead to the park. Put her on a slip lead. Now the dog's coming by before she even gets a chance to go into the slinking. You're going to give her a job to do a sit. You're going to put her into a heel or an off leash heel. I'm, I'm not sure how well in obedience this dog is trained. Um, you need to give her a job so that she's not slinking. Okay. With Sam, that has worked really, really well. I'm sure you guys all know Sam's fully e-collar trained. Um, so my husband actually discovered this. I was actually really quite pleased 
And he's discovered when he puts Sam in a heel, the stalking stops because now Sam's got something to do, right? And he'll, he'll be looking up like this, looking up, looking up. Am I good? Am I good? Am I good? We pass the dog. Break. Guess what? He doesn't care about the dog behind him anymore because all he had to do was stay focused on us, stay focused at the task at hand. He had a job to do. That's it. And then now, like, he, he'll trot ahead. He might look back and be like, oh, look, it's a dog. But it's nothing crazy. The charging has stopped. Um, slinking, for the most part, has stopped. But if it does continue, he gets uh, a pretty good interruption. Um, the next stuff, it's already been 40 minutes. All right. I am going to address, um, there's other ones. They can wait till next week. Usually I try to round these up to about 45 minutes. Um, yes, Christmas day. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I'd have a ton of people watching on Christmas day that, and I have a life that day. I know weird, weird. Um, so you guys, I love talking to you every week. I absolutely love this. Um, this is something I've started. I've actually had other trainers tell me, uh, I meet with other trainers once a month and they tell me that this is a goal of theirs and I always encourage them to do it. And I'm going to in the new year, um, have, uh, someone else on with me and we're going to kind of bounce ideas back and forth. Merry Christmas, Sheila. I love you too, girl. You're doing awesome. Keep it up. Uh, keep it up with Mocha, Bo, and the other one. Um, you got this. I really believe that you do and life's going to get better. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to have uh, Jen from the Calming Canine. I don't think that she's watching right now. She's going to kill me when she sees this because she always watches my Facebook lives after the fact. But um, we are going, I'm going to have her on and um, we're going to bounce ideas off of each other. We're going to go through your guys' questions together. You're so welcome, Sheila. Um, so that's something I'm really looking forward to. It's my New Year's resolution. Um, I'm going to have to uh, rip her Facebook live bandaid off. She doesn't want to do it, but I think we all want to see it. Um, she's amazing, you guys. Uh, I've learned so much from her. So it would be my honor to sit down in front of you guys with her and um, chat it up. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I am Michelle Sellers. I am from Cascadia Dog Training, and we are in North Vancouver, BC. Um, another thing um, that I'm really um, trying to make known right now is that we are doing our foundation program. Uh, through Skype. Yes. So it works really, really well. The only catch is for the walk session, you need two people, one person to hold the camera so that I can see what's going on. The other person to walk the dog. But other than that, it's just me and you and FaceTime and your dog. And um, I actually have somebody in Cranbrook <clears throat> who I'm going to be helping coming up shortly. Uh, as those of you who have tuned in before know um, I helped my girlfriend Morgan. She ended up actually getting a second dog, taking everything she learned, applied to that dog, and now she's got two fabulous dogs. Um, so not only do we have the puppy starter, we've got the foundation training via Skype or FaceTime now. And you guys, I'm so excited. Business is growing, um, helping lots of people, and that's what it's really about for me. So I love you all. Again, I'm Michelle Sellers. Um, even after we're done, feel free to um, share this. Who knows? Maybe there's something in here that can help somebody else. All right. I love all of you. Take care. And I will see you next week. I will put a post up of what day I'm going to do the live. All right. Mwah. Good night, you guys. What am I doing? Bringing up other stuff.